Hello everyone, welcome back to Rare Japanese Sound. And today I wanted to try out a topic that's a bit different from the usual, because we've been talking, discussing about how to collect, why to collect certain things, discussing pretty theoretical aspects of the whole collecting music thing. But I just wanted to take a small video as an opportunity to show you what I bought over the last month during, you know, quarantine months, so nothing, nothing else to do basically. And so you, to use that as an example of how I personally manage, well, on one hand, what uh, records are important for me to buy, what I value as what I want more than something else. And on the other hand, well, how many opportunities do I have to buy a certain thing? Because, well, I might like an album very much, but if the album is available all the time, it won't be maybe on my top priority as a purchase. On the other hand, an album that I might like a bit less, but would be much rarer to find that would only happen to be on auction, let's say once every year. Well, I would probably put more highly on my list of purchases. So without further ado, let me just go through the different things I bought and explain to you my reasoning, the price I paid for it in Japanese yen. So if you want to have the euro and dollar cost, you can just divide by 100 and you will have a pretty good approximation of it. And yeah, let's get into it. So first off is an album we've been discussing a lot on this channel. It's because I bought it actually pretty much a month ago. And it's of course uh, Hiroshi Sado's Orient album. This one, I think I paid around 15,000 yen for. Uh, I bought it on Yahoo Auction. You can check the auction basically because everything I bought, I usually buy either on Yahoo Auctions or Mercury. And because the auctions are public, you can pretty much check everything, check the condition, the price. I think it's nice to have an open platform to check the prices of things. It helps make more informed, well, better informed decisions. And in that case, I thought that 15,000 was a pretty good price for it. And if you want to get into the detail, of course, the sleeve itself is not in a great shape, I would say VG at best, but the record itself seems pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that purchase, of course, no obi, but it is the original version. And as we discussed in the first video, given how rare the album is and how few times it gets sold on auction or anywhere else, I really decided to, to purchase it because it's not maybe, it's not my top album for Hiroshi Sado. I personally prefer Awakening and his later, later albums, but this one is definitely the rarest by a large margin. So I just had to buy it when I saw the opportunity. And actually, I think I was the only one who bid on that auction. So I found that pretty interesting, but I'm pretty happy with my purchase. So before we move on to the next things I bought, I need to explain a bit the context. So recently on Mercury Japan, of course, Mercury Japan, there is one particular seller that started to sell a bunch of extremely rare, well, ambient albums, not only Japanese, but also European, American, but I'm mostly focusing on the rare uh, Japanese ambient or new age album. And the guy basically is selling a lot of things. And I was pretty lucky to uh, get in touch with him early on and managed to reserve a few things to buy from our personal collection. And in particular, I'm really happy to have bought a few uh, albums by Hiroshi Yoshimura in preparation for the video that I made two weeks ago. And the reason why I'm particularly uh, excited by those albums is because, so for instance, here we have four postcards, which, yeah, four postcards, which is the last album that Yoshimura made before his death. And this particular copy is sealed, which is pretty rare to find on any CD. This one being more recent, 2003, if I'm not mistaken. 2004, sorry. Uh, Yoshimura died in 2003, but this one, 2004. And as we discussed in that video, this release itself is pretty rare. They're released by the Crescent label. Of course, the album was reissued a few years later, later which makes the original release maybe not as prestigious as some of the other releases by Hiroshi Yoshimura. But I still like the release for its rarity and the fact that this copy is sealed, which you don't see too often. I also bought, uh, again, by Yoshimura Softwave, which is a compilation of very early works 
that he did with uh, music boxes and uh, analog instruments as opposed to synthesizers like he did later. So yeah, this one again is sealed and I think I bought it for, I want to say 3000 yen maybe. Uh, this one I think I paid 4000 which is honestly a great price. Even if it hadn't been sealed, I didn't have the obvious, I would still have paid 4000 for it. So I'm really happy with that purchase. And this one was just for good measure, just to, to have the other one because I didn't have it. And also what I'm extremely excited about was having bought Flora, which is, well, even, well, probably the more famous of the three in that lot. And I think that it became much more in demand since 2017 or around that era. Before that, it used to be around 3,000 yen, I want to say. So pretty much the price it was when it released. Now it hovers between 10 and 15,000 yen, I would say, which is, I think, fair for a CD that is this rare and an album of this quality. This one, I think I paid 11,500 for it. Again, a good price. The album is in great condition, not sealed. It's just in a plastic case to help protect it and keep the OB in place. Just a great purchase. And I love the, the amount of just aesthetic you get inside. I'm not going to open it, but you get a lot of cool photos inside. You can check out the Discogs uh, page on which I edit the pictures because they weren't there already. And yeah, I think it's a great album. Well, until it gets re-released on vinyl record, which should happen at some point in the near future, I would guess. Okay, moving on. As a matter of fact, from the same person from whom I bought those three Yoshimura albums. I also got a few more albums that are a bit less known. Uh, well, that are not as well known as those three. But to me, they are extremely good albums and they are most importantly part of the Shizen label, uh, which is a label that all the New Age fans might know and specifically for the releases by Motohiko Hamase or maybe those by Sojiro, depending on your style. And personally, I'm glad to have had the opportunity to buy those two CDs because those two are pretty rare. And well, to give some details about the Shizen label, we're probably going to make a whole video about it down the line. But to make it quick, the Shizen label is basically on one hand, all the Sojiro releases and all the very mainstream releases that sold very well and everything else sold very poorly, in my opinion. So you have this big difference between the Sojiro releases, extremely easy to find, and all the others, much rarer and much more expensive. Another factor is that the season label was very short-lived. It only lived for two years, I think, 1986 to 87. And as time went on, the rarity just keeps increasing. The early albums are not that rare. And the latest ones, like for instance, I think Intaglio by Motohiho Motohiko Hamase, sorry, is pretty much near the end and is very rare. Uh, Aerial Tales by, I think, Salyu is how you pronounce it, was released a bit earlier. I actually also have the LP for this one, but just for the sake of completing my collection, because you don't find it too often on sale, I just bought it. This one for, I don't know, 3,000 yen and perhaps 3,500 for this one. This one, if you can find it on record, is probably the rarest and most expensive release on the Shizen label. Uh, actually, the guy also sold it on LP for 48,000 yen, which I thought was a steal, but unfortunately I didn't get to buy it because someone beat me to it. Speaking of Motohiko Hamase, uh, another disc that I bought with those two is his other album, Notes of Forestry, which we actually discussed in the reissues topic, I think, last week. What's interesting with this album is the original is on CD, as you can see. Actually, it's not in a standard CD case, but in a slim case. So you can see the back on, of the CD on uh, the back of the cover, which is, well, a rarity in and of itself. What's interesting is it's been re-released as an LP, I think in 2000 and 2017, 18, by some Japanese label, which actually goes for more than the original CD, which is pretty interesting and you should keep that in mind when trying to uh, decide which one of the two releases you might want. Also, I think it got re-released last week by a European label, which I don't remember the name of, but that way you can just easily find the album now. 
personally because I always like to have the original that's what I went for and that's what the seller was selling so I just bought the three together and probably I also paid 3500 for this one all right now something that I didn't buy on the public websites I think I bought it from organicmusic.jp it's in Japan, there are a lot of, I want to say, private websites of, or small record shops that sell a few CDs, records out there. And if you manage to find them, they are a pretty good source of just finding rare albums from time to time. And the price can often be pretty attractive. So that's why I bought uh, Static for Piano by, again, Hiroshi Yoshimura. But this is the CD book version, which we talked about in the video two weeks ago. And I think this... Um, this reissue is much more interesting than the original, which was simply a CD. On this one, you get so not only your CD as part of you know a small small case, nothing too fancy with that. But personally, what I really enjoyed was the small book that went with it. It's only sixty pages or so, and most of it is only you know piano sheet music of the songs inside the album because it's piano solo. But you also get a few essays by Yoshimura himself, also a few photographs which he made and a few poems too, which I thought, well, really interesting to read. And it's actually not too difficult. Even with my Japanese, which is not too good, I was able to read through the booklet in pretty easily. And I thought it was extremely interesting. So I definitely recommend to buy this album if you can ever find it but because of its pretty unique nature it's a CD book so it's not something that might be handled by traditional uh, CD stores record stores and it's not something that might be also handled by traditional bookstores so that makes this particular release a bit hard to find but if you can find it this one I think I bought for 8,000 yen but I saw it for sale pretty recently for 6,000 yen too so you can get price around that that range and uh, i think it's a, a steal for just the quality of what it is and also the rarity because it's a pretty rare one but again limited audience so it makes the price stay relatively low and finally something i bought because i found the book in static for piano so interesting that i thought okay might as well try to jump into the rest of hiroshi yoshimura's books so here is one that i again found on mercury for 800 yen i believe it's um, one of his three books. This is his second one uh, that he made in 1994. And basically he's talking about sound design and sound of the environment. I'm not again, I'm not yet done with it, sorry, but so far it's a pretty inter interesting read, but again, it's in only Japanese, of course, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, well, someone tried to translate this book and try to publish it for English-speaking crowds because, in my opinion, the content is really up there in terms of quality and just the interesting things that a sound designer like Hiroshi Yoshimura has to say. I actually also bought uh, Hiroshi Yoshimura's first book, which is called Toshi no Oto, or uh, The Sound of the City, which is, well, quite more expensive than this one because this one got reissued a few years back i think in 2004 but toshinoto was never really reprinted past uh, 1993 or so which makes the book quite rare quite expensive but again it's books it's we're getting out of topic from what we're originally talking about but i think it's important to get a full image when you want to collect a particular artist like Hiroshi yoshimura who really had a very wide range of things he worked on. So it's good to have that kind of knowledge of the things he did and what he was interested on if you really want to enjoy his albums to the full extent. So that's it. A bit of a short video today, but I hope that you enjoyed uh, watching, you know, watching me explaining how much just you can buy with a few hundred dollars. Like you have a lot of very uh, sought after albums, some of which were in sealed condition. So you can see that it's not really about how much money you can pour into your hobby, but it's more like finding the right opportunity. And for instance, finding one seller got me with like five CDs or more. I don't even remember how many I bought. But sometimes you just got to find the right opportunity and seize it, try to, to dig into 
Well, if one seller is sell in selling a certain album, especially a rare album, chances are the seller might have some albums that are similar to that one. So remember, always try to, to find out things, try to dig deeper. That's actually how you will find the best deals out there. In any case, this was Rare Japanese Sounds. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, let me know your feedback and until next time, stay tuned.